What are you going to do this summer? Catch up on reading? Take some time to recharge? Or maybe travel? That's all great. And with these seven books, it could be the summer that changes your life. In Seneca's Letters from a Stoic, he says that we can travel as much as we want, but we'll never escape our biggest problem, ourselves. We might like to think that an escape from work and a break from the monotony of life will lead to better times, but Seneca challenges this attitude and asks us to look at ourselves instead. If we can make ourselves better, if we can improve, then no matter the environment, we will thrive. No matter the distractions, no matter how uncomfortable it is, improve ourselves, the whole world gets better. And not only that, but Seneca packages this in incredibly practical advice, and he reminds us that we should take action. It's not just about reading, but it's about the taking action that the reading inspires. We can read all we want, but if we don't do anything with it, what's the point? So is that it then? Is that the only book that we need and we can get going straight away? Unfortunately not. Unfortunately, there needs to be a precursor. There needs to be something that comes first, before we can act. First, we need to decide on the direction that we want to go in. What would constitute a good life? What does it mean? And what are the actions that would lead to it? And this is where the Plato's Socratic dialogue, Protagoras and Meno, comes in. Within it, Socrates asks the other characters what it means to be good and to lead a good life. And, after some begging from the other characters, as is typical, Socrates is willing to give his own answer. But the real magic comes when we ignore the answers that are given by the characters and by Socrates himself, and we imagine that he is asking the questions to us directly, what would we come up with? What would we answer back? It's when he asks us to think and we then have to reflect that the magic of the book is revealed. But sometimes, especially with a question as philosophical and abstract as this, it can be hard to come up with an answer. And a way around this is to define it in the negative. What would it mean not to lead a good life? What actions should we avoid doing? By exploring different vices and their consequences, Chekhov's short stories give us an idea of the actions that we should be avoiding. If we can avoid these vices and the temptations that arise from them, if we can avoid greed, arrogance and lust, then maybe that will lead to a better life. And I also think that it's great to go away with short stories, as you can dip in and out of them on the busier days without ruining the narrative. However, when I do have time, I love to settle into a long read, one where I can spend time in the world and get to know the characters. And at the moment, my favourite pick is Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Not only do I love the Napoleonic era, but we also can continue with the question of morality that started in Plato's Protagoras and Meno. However, here we see it play out in the mind of Jean Valjean, or the main character of the novel. He constantly tries to do the right thing, increasingly for the good of others. And it's when that he is working with compassion and love for another that he really thrives. Seeing these decisions play out in context, embedded within a story, is a great advantage of fiction over philosophy and certainly over self-help. I always think that great fiction is the most worthwhile read. And to really zoom in on this idea of duty that Jean Valjean felt for others, we can turn to Shakespeare. And I know what you're thinking, Shakespeare, really? Is that my definition of a summer read? Something to relax into? And weirdly, I think that it is. I think when you have time, which most people do over summer, Shakespeare is the perfect thing to read. As to really get the most from Shakespeare, it needs to be read again and again, and usually instantaneously one after the other. So when you've got the time, I think that Shakespeare's plays are great to read, and to read the same one over and over again, until you really can understand the plot and the motivations behind the different characters. Regarding duty, two of the best are Julius Caesar and Antony and Cleopatra, where we see Brutus and Mark Antony respectively battle with their conscience over what should be the path that they take. They are torn apart by their duty to Rome, to their friends, and also to their lovers. Shakespeare is a master of exploring the human condition, and any of his plays are a great starting point to look into what it means to live and what it means to live well. But all of these big ideas of duty, morality and purpose can be a bit heavy. It is summer after all. And sometimes we just need a reminder of the little things in life and the relationships that we have, rather than constantly going on these solitary philosophical undertakings. In Ogawa's Housekeeper and the Professor, we are reminded of the little things that we can do to make the lives of others so much better. And while we might think that they're insignificant, while they might forget them further down the line, it doesn't matter. In that moment, they're magical. And we should never forget that. We should never forget about the small things that we do that massively improve the lives of others. Sometimes we need to turn our attention outwards. Stop thinking about ourselves. Stop thinking about how we can be better and just think about others. Think about what we can do for them. And maybe as a consequence, we ourselves will find that our life is improved. And in the end, we just need to remember to keep on going. It might not be right at first. It certainly won't ever be perfect, but that doesn't mean that we give up. And a great example for this it's Hemingway's Old Man in the Sea. Don't give up. Believe in yourself. And just keep going. See you in the next one.